There are quite a few settings and options we can tweak when we make 2D or 2D3 hybrid games with Unreal Engine. That will either make our games look better or become more performant. The first setting I want to talk about is anti-aliasing. Simply said, anti-aliasing is a technique that helps remove jagged lines and there are multiple methods which each have their own pros and cons. In the project settings you can find the anti-aliasing method setting. By default this will be set to Temporal Super Resolution or TSR and this works great for 3D games. However, when you're using sprites, or at least pixel art sprites, this can create some strange visual artifacts. This becomes especially noticeable if your camera is far away. You can try out the different methods for yourself, but what always worked the best for me was setting it to FXAA, or Fast Approximate Anti-Aliasing. This doesn't only apply when making 2D only games, but also for 2D 3D hybrid games, since your sprites will have the same artifacts otherwise. I was asked before if there's a way to use FXAA on your sprites but TSR on the 3D environment in your world, but as far as I know there's no way of setting that up since anti-aliasing is applied to the screen level. By the way, I finished creating all 10 episodes of the Paper 2D Basic series, and you can get instant access to all of them right now on Patreon through the $6 tier. Of course everybody on YouTube will get access to these videos over the next couple of months, but joining the Patreon is a great way to support the channel and will give you a head start with your 2D game development. With the $12 tier you can also get early access to all my other videos and you'll get your hands on the Paper 2D Cheat Sheet which has many useful resources about making 2D games in Unreal Engine that will save you a lot of time. The next setting is Motion Blur. This can again be found in the project settings and is active by default. Motion Blur is an effect that can add a lot of visual flair to 3D games but as you can see when working with 2D sprites it just makes everything blurry and isn't visually pleasing. You simply need to remove the check mark and your 2D game will already look a lot better. If you're making a 2D3 hybrid game however, you could possibly get away with leaving the motion blur on. Ideally, you can make it an option and your game users can turn on and off, but it should probably be off by default. The next thing to keep in mind are the material settings for your sprites and flipbooks. By default, this is set to masked unlit sprite material. Unlit basically means that your sprite is not affected by lights or shadows in your scene, but will always be shown exactly the way the sprite art was drawn no matter how dark or light your scene is. This is very efficient since no lighting or shadows need to be calculated and this is most likely the setting you want for 2D only games. For 2D3 hybrid games however, this will most likely not look great. You can instead set this to masked lit sprite material. This will allow your sprite to receive shadows from your level. And also receive lighting information from lights in your scene and is perfect if you're going for an HD 2D look. You can also create custom sprite materials and customize them further. However, this will be covered in detail in the next video of this series. One more setting that can help you ground your sprite character with a 3D scene is casting shadows. You simply need to go to your sprite or flipbook and add a check mark for cast shadows. This will easily make your 2D3 hybrid games look a lot better. The next setting is related to auto exposure. Auto exposure can help you simulate eye adaption from brightness and is great for photorealistic games. However, for 2D games this could cause a lot of issues and might end up making your sprites look washed out. You can see that the sprite is dark at first, but gets brighter and brighter once you press the play button. The setting we need to change here is not in the project settings, but it'll need to be set on our active camera. You first want to look for metering mode and set it to manual. Then look for exposure compensation and play around with the value. In my case something between 10 and 11 looked about right. Here it doesn't really matter if your camera is attached to your actor or controlled in some other way, as long as you can change these settings. Unreal Engine 5 added Lumen as the global illumination option which can make your games look amazing and also works perfectly fine with 2D 3D hybrid games. However when we make a 2D game that only uses unlit materials we don't benefit from Lumen at all. I think the system will probably be smart enough to understand this and not use up any resources in that case, but just to be sure we can turn it off. Go to project settings and look for global illumination. Instead of lumen you can set this to none instead. You can then also set reflection method to screen space. The next setting is also related to optimization. To save on resources we can enable forward shading. Generally speaking forward rendering will be more performant than deferred rendering and this is a technique often used in VR games. But I also saw Chris Wilson, the design director of the Siege and the Sandfox, mention this in one of his Unreal Engine 2D tutorials and I'll gladly take his word for it. However you need to keep in mind that forward rendering is a bit less versatile and certain features don't work with it. So you might need to go through some trial and error to see if this is fitting for your game. 
The last thing I want to talk about is perspective camera versus orthographic camera. This doesn't apply to 2D3 hybrid games, but only full on 2D games, since for hybrids you'll always use the perspective camera. In most game engines, you'd use an orthographic camera for these kinds of games because it helps you remove all depth from the scene. In Unreal Engine, we can also easily change the projection mode of our camera from perspective to orthographic. And at first glance, most things look fine, except for the camera preview being broken. However, once you add more features to your game, you'll slowly understand that the orthographic camera is pretty broken. Again, Chris Wilson, the design director of the Siege and the Sandfox, also mentioned all the issues they had with the orthographic camera and how just switching back to the perspective camera fixed most of them and allowed them to increase the overall look of the game. I hope this video gave you a decent overview of all the settings you can play around with to improve your 2D or 2D3 hybrid games. As always, thanks to my patrons for making this tutorial series possible. 